I've been working with tree shelters really since their conception in the early 1980s, and I must have helped hundreds of customers to install millions of tree shelters. But now, the tide's turning against plastic tree shelters that litter the environment. My customers, like many others, are looking for sustainable alternatives. But alternative shelters are only the right choice if they actually work and if they live up to their eco claims. It's relatively easy to make something that looks like a tree shelter, but I'm already talking to people who've spent money on new shelters, which then failed within a couple of months. So if you're looking for a sustainable alternative to traditional tree shelters, I wanna help you to make an informed decision. The way I would assess any new product would be to think about the three stages of a tree shelter's life. So, how easy is it to install? Does it do the job and last the duration? And what happens to it when its useful life is over? First, installation. Shelters need to be lightweight and easy to transport and to carry to site, and then, quick and simple to install. With planting labour becoming scarcer every day, particularly since we left the EU, ease and speed of installation is absolutely vital. Already, some products fall down here. I've seen new designs that are heavy and rigid or have multiple parts, which makes them very fiddly to put together. Once the shelter's in place, how well will it do its job? A shelter is there to protect the tree from herbivores, herbicides and harsh weather, so it has to be strong. But it also has to be flexible. A rigid shelter might be too brittle and crack under pressure from deer fraying, mechanical weeding or a heavy snow dump. The shelter doesn't just protect the sapling, it actually creates an enhanced microclimate for growth. Forestry Commission Handbook number seven shows that survival rates, height and stem girth are all optimised around 80% of natural light transmission. Shelters made from natural fibres, such as cardboard, won't allow anywhere near that level of light transmission. Designers have tried to overcome this by adding holes into the tube, but you would need a lot of holes to reach that optimum 80% threshold. And holes might allow herbicide spray to pass through, damaging the tree. You need a shelter that can withstand stresses and provide the ideal growing conditions. But in a forestry setting, you also need a shelter that can go on doing this job for five or more years. I've come across new shelters that seem to be made from cardboard that's been coated with some mystery material to stop it breaking down or collapsing when it gets wet. But so far, I've seen no evidence of these shelters lasting one year, let alone five. But you don't have to rely on my anecdotal evidence. There are ways to test how a material will perform over time. Accelerated weather aging is a lab-based test that mimics natural conditions over years compressed down into a few months. I'd want to see a product that has undergone exposure testing equivalent to at least five years and still remains strong and flexible. So ask for evidence of that testing. And finally, of course, is the question of what happens to the shelter at the end of its useful life. Biodegradable tree shelters should be designed to break down naturally in the environment, avoiding unsightly litter and microplastics. So the big question is, do these shelters actually biodegrade? One material being touted is PLA. Now this is a plant-based biodegradable plastic and it's used in compostable coffee cups, for example. However, this material is designed to biodegrade in industrial composting conditions, where commercial food waste collection is taken. In fact, PLA needs an activation temperature of 58 degrees for the biodegradation process to start, and that isn't going to happen in the British countryside. Removing tree shelters is costly, difficult, and can have a negative impact on the natural environment. This is why many, or even most, tree shelters aren't currently removed. 
So designing a new biodegradable tree shelter that relies on being removed doesn't, in my opinion, solve the problem. Therefore, it's essential that any biodegradable tree shelter has been tested for soil biodegradability, not just compostability. That means tested to show that it will fully break down in the soil type, temperature and humidity that the tree shelter will find itself in. The truth is, I haven't yet found a product on the market that can both do the job and has a sustainable end of life solution. And when customers realize this, the next question they ask is, what if we went without? A national newspaper recently claimed that it would be more sustainable to plant trees without tree shelters and just accept the losses. But depending on where you are in the country, losses can be anywhere between 25 and 90%. And that's not counting the role that tree shelters play in accelerating healthy growth. I don't think that planters can or should have to swallow these kinds of losses. The only other option is fencing large areas or controlling deer and rabbit numbers. Fencing is often impractical. It increases pressure on neighbouring sites and it brings up issues of public access. And most growers aren't looking to eradicate wildlife from their sites. They simply want to protect young trees. Shawgreen supplies well over a million tree shelters to customers across the world every year. With no viable, truly biodegradable alternatives on the market, the only option left for us was to create our own. We're proud to have been working with British-based Biome Bioplastics to develop a new material for biodegradable tree shelters. Together, we've spent three years and around half a million pounds on this research, testing hundreds of different material samples. Our new Vigilis Bio looks and acts exactly like a traditional Shawgreen Vigilis tree shelter. It's lightweight, it's easy to install, and it allows for ample light transmission. The material has undergone extensive testing in the lab to show that it will remain strong and flexible for the first five years of the young tree's life, just like our standard tree shelters. However, after five years, this material becomes brittle, eventually breaking up and falling to the forest floor. Here, pieces come into contact with the microorganisms found in the soil, which naturally break it down. We're putting our material through extensive testing for soil biodegradability, and we're manufacturing tens of thousands of these new shelters to be installed at sites up and down the country and monitored over the next seven years proving that this new shelter both does the job and has a natural and harmless end-of-life solution. I've probably sold more tree shelters than anyone else on this planet, and I believe that Vigilis Bio is the future of sustainable planting. <laughs>